See, look, Chinese. Okay, so that's not going to help. One last try. No, okay. So you have all taken some kind of grammar class before, so I'm sure you're wondering why do we have to take grammar again? What would be different about grammar class in college? And the answer is that, first of all, you already have some ideas of basic grammar, so hopefully learning grammar this time will be faster. Secondly, uh, we are not just going to learn about right and wrong grammar. We're going to be learning about the idea of grammar. Why is it part of language? Why is it important to learn? And then uh, the way that we will check your grammar is by using it in a real world situation. Uh, so let's first of all look at the Moodle page. Everything you need is on this page. If you need to contact me, please use this email. If you go to Moodle and you click on my name, it will give you an email address. That one does not work. Use this one. If um, so, every class I will record the class and upload it to YouTube and then post a link onto Moodle. So if you miss the class or you fall asleep, you can go home and check what you missed. Um, if you need to join the Microsoft Teams group uh, before the school adds you, you can use this code to add yourself to the class. Next is the syllabus. This is what we're going to be doing in this class. So uh, in our department, you will be taking two semesters of grammar. This semester is everything up to a full sentence. So like, you know, words, nouns, verbs, and then all the way up to a sentence. The second semester is between different sentences and connecting sentences. Um, so this is the schedule. For this semester, first week introduction to the course, I'm doing that now, uh, and then a basic grammar overview to give you a general idea uh, so that when we go into more detail, hopefully you will not feel lost. Then we're going to be spending seven weeks on verbs, four weeks on nouns, two weeks on descriptives, so adjectives, adverbs, and prepositions. Week 15 will be on mechanics, uh, punctuation, typing, the details of how you put English on the page. Week 16, you guys are probably very tired, so we're going to take a break and uh, show you a movie. Week 17 will be a mock exam, Moni call, so that you have a way to prepare for week 18, which is the final exam. Um, the textbook will be handouts, fa uh, jiang yi, but these are the sources where I found the information. Learning guidance, if you come to class, and you practice, you'll be fine. Don't worry too much. Uh, some of you are not freshmen. And the reason you're here is probably because uh, you failed grammar the first time. And the second time. And maybe the third time. Uh, good news for you is that 
um, that teacher has retired. So I'm the new guy. Uh, and so maybe you will have more luck with me. And then uh, this information is very important. This is your grade. Out of 100 points, your midterm oral report will be 20%, final exam will be 40%, and attendance will be 40%. So what is the midterm oral report? If you look at this schedule, you will see starting from week four, right? We have presentation one and then presentation two, all the way to week 10, presentation seven. These will be group oral reports. I will show you your topics later today, uh, and um, I will also lead you into dividing into small groups. I'll talk about that later. Final exam is very straightforward. Uh, week 18, come to class, take the exam. That's worth 40%. So for returning students, this week, uh, this semester, we don't have a coordinated midterm and final exam week. So for week nine and week 18, you will come here to class. Uh, and then attendance. Uh, as I'm sure you know, at Mingchuan, if you miss seven weeks, including uh, sick leave, bing jia, personal leave, si jia, and no leave, kuang ke, seven weeks, the system will fail you. I can't save you. The system will fail you. So it doesn't make sense for attendance to look at all 18 weeks, right? Because after seven weeks, it doesn't matter. So the attendance score is for the first six weeks or the first six weeks that you miss in class. Um, 40 points, six weeks. For every week that you don't come to class and you don't take leave, uh, I will take away seven points from your final grade. Right? OK, so that that's uh, something you should keep in mind. OK, do you have questions about the schedule or the grades? All right, let's keep going. Please. Uh, if you need to take leave, uh, please apply through the school system. Yeah. Yes. Yes, the mock exam will not count toward your final grade. That's just for your practice. Monica, Other questions? Yes, thank you. Good. Uh, next, we have class emails. I will try to tell you all the information you need to know during class. But if something comes up between classes and you need to know, I will post something here and the system will send an email to your school email account. Now, I know that not everybody looks at their school email account every day. So if I post something new, I will update this part. I will tell you the date and the subject of the news. So if you come on to Moodle and you look at this, you can see whether there is new information that you have to know about. Next, this is a link to a YouTube video teaching you how to open up uh, the automatic YouTube transcript. 逐字稿, 
since currently we don't have uh, English subtitles, um, after I post the recording to YouTube, YouTube will produce its own English subtitles. And you can actually search those subtitles using the transcript. So YouTube the Jusgao功能其实可以搜尋. So if you need to watch back a class and you don't want to watch the whole thing, you can search for keywords and jump to that part of the video. So if you need to do that, you can click here to watch how to do it. Uh, this is where I will record your attendance score. You can't see this. It's hidden from you. Uh, and then th these two, I think, are some useful pieces of information for studying at our department. Um, I will go through the first one later today. The second one you can look at if you have time. It's in Chinese. OK, next. Uh, this PDF is the handout we will be using in class. I have prepared paper copies that I will pass out uh, later today. Um, but if you want a PDF or you forgot your paper copy, you can find it on Moodle. Um, the total handout is like 70, 80 pages. This is only half. I will give you the second half. Uh, when you need it, but the whole thing is in this one file. Uh, mainly because the school says I can't print more than 50 pages at a time. So uh, this next one. Is if you need more practice questions to practice your grammar, this entire book is full of questions. Um, it doesn't have answers. So if you practice uh, using these questions and you're not sure about the answer, come to me and I will tell you whether it's right or wrong. This next book is uh, pure grammar information only, no questions. So if uh, I teach something in class and you don't understand it very well, and you talk to me and you still don't understand it very well, you can check this book to see if this explanation makes more sense to you. Uh, we're not going to be using it as a textbook. This is simply here in case you need more help. OK, midterm presentation. So these are the uh, weekly group oral presentation uh, materials. So I found a cool book called Grammar for a Full Life, and the author talks about how uh, grammar is not just about using language, it also affects how we think. And so if you use a more positive and open grammar, maybe your own life will become more positive and open. Maybe. Uh, so. I have taken some of the best uh, chapters and rearranged them. Uh, so this semester, each group will present on one of these seven topics. And next semester, each group will present on one of these eight topics. So later today, uh, I will let you guys. Hmm. There are two ways of forming small groups. I can let you find your own people and then choose a topic. Or I can let you choose a topic and then find the other people who chose the same topic. Which one do you want? I'll give you five seconds to think about it and then we'll vote. OK, so if you want to find your group members and then choose a topic, please raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, 
13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. OK, if you want to choose a topic and then find the other people in your group, raise your hand. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13. OK, let's do both. <laughs> Later. Um, but first, I'll introduce these topics so that you can think about it during class. The first topic is about the importance of using clear and correct grammar. And if you, things, uh, things are missing, if you forget things, some problems that can uh, come up because of that. The second topic is about death. The third topic is about correcting. If you make a mistake, going back and correcting the mistake. The fourth one is about using the present tense to talk about written words. The idea is that if you read a story or you read history, using the present tense can connect you with those people. The fifth one is about the passive voice, Yuchi. The sixth one is about prepositions, Jeshitsu. And the seventh one is about commas, Dodian. Uh, so for each topic, uh, here's what you have to do. Read the chapter below. Each of these are quite short, like three to five pages. Read the chapter. Then in class, your presentation has to have two parts. Summarize the chapter. Tell us what the author says. Or explain it, I should say. And then tell us whether you think, uh, you think that it makes sense or not. Uh, try not to say, yes, it makes sense or no, it doesn't make sense. Try to explain uh, where it could be useful and where maybe it's not useful. Right. The length of the presentation is open. If uh, use as much time as you need. And don't use more than that. Uh, and as you just saw from the schedule, the first presentation is on week four. So the people who choose the first topic will have to give their presentation on week four. And then the people who choose the second topic will have to give the presentation on week five, all the way to week 10. Uh, here is how I will give your grade for the oral presentation. It's 20%, right? So 10 points will be from me. Like, how well did you give the summary and did your uh, reflection make sense? 10 points will be from your group members. This is what we call peer review, Tong Tsai Hu Ping. And when you give a score to your group members, you only have to consider one thing. For each person, how much did they contribute? So not everybody has to come on stage. As long as every person contributed something, maybe it's an idea, maybe it's a correction, Maybe it's uh, managing the other people, right? As long as you help your group members in some way, your group members can give you a score. OK? So no pressure, right? You only have to send at least one person to the stage. Uh, and do please use English. OK, do you have questions about the midterm presentation?
OK, next is the final exam. This is what the final exam will look like. The, the middle part is currently nonsense. Uh, but here's what you have to do. I will give you a paragraph. The paragraph will have 10 grammatical errors. Please correct each error. In the space below. Uh, so each line will have one error that will help you a little so you know each one has one mistake. Um, you need to circle the mistake for two points each and then write the correct version in the space below for another two points. You have to get the correction exactly right. Otherwise, it's no points. And then uh, so 10 questions. Two per mistake, two per correction, that's 40 points, which is your final exam grade. See, this is why there's a mock exam. Did you always my show money call? Um, I'm a person who likes to teach to the test, which you want kind of call So uh, when we go through each grammar concept, most of the time will be spent on correcting mistakes. Uh, so in fact, every week you will be practicing how to notice mistakes and how to correct them. So hopefully by week 18, you will be comfortable with doing this kind of task. OK, questions about the final exam? OK. Um, let's see, and then this is where I will put in your final exam grade. You can't see this right now. Uh, and then this is where I will upload each week's class recording. Finally, we have a bonus assignment. I will try my best to help you learn grammar and help you pass the course. But if near the end of the semester, you look at your grades and you don't think you're going to pass, you can consider doing the bonus assignment. If you do this correctly, the lowest final score you will get is 60 passing grade. Uh, or if I don't know if we have uh, graduate students, if we have graduate students, uh, your lowest score will be 70, a passing grade. Now, some people may think that this is here because I don't want to fail people. And this is true, but only partly true. The other half is. If during the semester you are not very, you don't work very hard and you don't take this class seriously, this is your last chance to do something with effort and sincerity. So this is why when I look at your bonus assignment, I will check if they are meaningful words. Right? If you simply uh, ask chat GPT something and then copy paste. It doesn't work. Meaningful here means it is related to your own ideas and your own experiences. Uh, at least 1000 meaningful words or if you use Chinese 2000 words because Chinese uh, the word count in Chinese is usually double the English word count. 通常英文翻成中文字就会长一倍, uh, so 1,000 and then 2,000, either one. Uh, so because this is your last best hope, because this is something that you, I hope you don't have to do, it's not easy. You have to read this and then write your reflections. What is this? This is 25 pages. Of English of 1968 English. So it's not easy to do. 
try not to have to do this. But if you really have no choice, this is your last chance. OK, do you have questions about this or the web page? OK. Let's before you fall asleep, let's divide you into groups. So. We need a total of seven groups. If you want to find your group members first, OK, we have like 72 people, so try to aim for 10 people in your group. If you want to find your group members first, do that. If you want to choose your topic first, come to the front and write down your student number on top of your topic. And then after everyone has finished, we will try to combine everything. Yes, go ahead.
If you are finished, please sit down. 完成,请坐下. If you have group members but no topic, please raise your hand. Two. So you have there are two groups with no topics, right? Okay. How many people are in your group? Four. Okay. And nine? Nine. Okay, okay. I can make that work. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I think for uh, week four, we should be ready, right? So if you are in, well, that's not very fair. Uh, I will record each group and email you your group members. Uh, does everyone have a group and a topic? Okay, great. 
Um, so before getting into the grammar review, I wanted to go over this PowerPoint with you. Things to keep in mind in an English department. Some of these might seem basic, but I put them here because some people do need a reminder. So these are just some basic ideas that I hope will help you in your college career. First thing to remember is that English is not like other subjects. English is a living language. So if you learn history, most of the facts are settled. Nothing big changes very much. If you learn math, same thing. Most of the ideas, everybody agrees, you don't have to worry about new ideas. But if you learn English, English is always changing. Uh, English is special even when compared to other languages. In Chinese, our language officially changes only when the Ministry of Education changes the dictionary. In French, if something new happens to French, the uh, French Academy has to approve the changes. In English, who does this? The answer is nobody. Then how do they write English dictionaries? Dictionaries ask ordinary people to send in examples of new uses of language. And if they get enough examples, they will change the dictionary. This means that the group that decides what is a new use of English is people who use English. You guys, okay, not you guys, native speakers. Uh, if you do find something new and you do submit something, maybe it would also lead to a change in the dictionary. Uh, but technically speaking, from a definition standpoint, so in native speakers of English decide what is correct English. Too bad for you, but I am a native speaker. So you have to listen to what I say. Um, but this also means that the best way to learn English, the way that people actually use English, is to observe. Yes, you can look at a dictionary. Yes, you can read a book of grammar. But they are already not the newest use of English. Only when you talk with a native speaker, read something written by a native speaker, do you really have the latest use of English? And this is also why English is full of exceptions, Li Wai, right? Think about when you learned grammar in the past. The teacher always said, this is the rule, but these are the exceptions. And this is why, nobody is in control. And the best way to learn the exceptions is also observation. So this applies to words, grammar, and even pronunciation, fying. For example, this sentence. Do you see anything wrong with this sentence? James didn't gift Dylan an invite because she wanted them to come. She was simply being polite. Uh, first of all, what does this sentence mean? Can someone tell me in Chinese? Kind of confusing, right? Anyone else want to try? What does this mean in Chinese? 
OK, I'll tell you first and then I'll explain why it looks like this. In Chinese, this goes James. Ba Yao Ching Han Di Ge Dylan Bu Si Ying Wei Xi Wang Dylan Lai Ta Zi Si Yo Li Mao De Ge Er Yi. So why is this? Let's go uh, from the individual words. So we have two people and we have two pronouns, Dai Ming Zi, she and them. She refers to James because both are the subject. So James is actually a girl. Them refers to Dylan. Even though Dylan is one person, Dylan uh, has a non-binary gender. So in English, we use they and them for someone whose gender is not man or woman. Next, we have the verbs. Gift is a noun, right? Li Wu. But here it's used as a verb. On the other hand, invite is a verb, but here it's used as a noun. English can do this much more easily than Chinese because the definition of what is a noun and what is a verb is not the meaning of the word. The definition is where in the sentence does the word appear? So because in this sentence, this spot is left for the verb, this word must be a verb. So gift here means give as a gift. And because this spot must be a noun, this word must also be a noun. Invite just means invitation, Yao uh, Qinghan. But you will notice that the pronunciation is different. Fine, you bin. As a verb, this is invite. As a noun, it is invite. This is something that often happens when you turn an English verb into a noun. And then finally, the last point. In English sentences, if you have a negative, folding, and you have a reason, the negative negates the reason. 如果你句中有否定又有原因, so as I said in Chinese, uh, right? It negates the reason. It is not because of this, it is because of that. If you want to avoid this, if you want to negate the phenomenon, then you will add a comma before the reason. If you add a comma here, you will negate the phenomenon and not the reason. Because But how would you know this unless someone told you? Well, you probably won't find this sentence in the real world, but you will find different parts of this sentence. If you read more and you observe more, you will be able to put these ideas together to make sense of something like this. This also applies to vocabulary. Um, the best kind of vocabulary test question is the closed test. Because in the real world, if you come across a word you don't know, you have to guess. You can check a dictionary, but not everybody likes to stop every 10 seconds to look up a word. The best way to learn English is to guess and then correct yourself each time you guess wrong. So for example, uh, this, these three lines come from a poem in Alice in Wonderland, uh, and 
in this book, there are lots of words that actually don't mean anything. They're nonsense. And yet when we read this kind of thing, we do get an idea of what's going on. Even though the words don't make sense, we can get a feeling for what's happening. The Jabberwock with eyes of flame came whiffling through the Tolgi wood and burbled as it came. What kind of feeling do we get from this sentence? I'll let you think about it as we take a 10 minute break.
the Jabberwock with eyes of flame. Jabberwock begins with a capital J. And in terms of grammar, it is the subject. So it's some kind of person or it has eyes of flame, so it's a creature maybe. And it's probably a scary creature or um, a powerful creature came whiffling through the togi wood. Wood here means forest. A togi wood. What kind of wood does that feel like? What kind of forest does that feel like? Is it a light and airy forest? A fun place to have a picnic? Or is it a dark and scary forest with creatures and witches and magic and power? To me, it sounds like the second kind. And how does it move? It comes whiffling. What kind of movement is that? Is that fast and clean? Or is that slow and bumping into things and noisy? To me, it also sounds like the second kind. And then finally, it burbled as it came. So as it moves, it also gives off this kind of sound. Maybe it's a uh, it, it gives us the feeling that maybe it's it's not entirely in control of itself. It's a creature that has so much power and danger that you can feel it, you can hear it. None of these words mean anything, and yet they give us a concrete, even powerful feeling and image. And that tells us you don't have to have a dictionary to learn English words in a functional sense. And then finally, pronunciation. The third one is a written dialect, fang yan. Uh, and can you tell what it means by reading it? It's not easy because it's written for your ears, not for your eyes. So if I say, Lord of mercy, honey, I sure is glad to see my child. Does that make more sense to you? Or in a uh, correct English pronunciation, Lord of mercy, honey, I sure am glad to see my child. Uh, so even pronunciation you can pick up through observation and actually using the language not just looking at it as knowledge in a textbook. Next point, this is more about being a college student. Each course has its own set of rules. There's no single answer. So maybe you're taking uh, two courses that are related to each other. Maybe you're taking grammar, and writing, right? You have to use grammar in writing class. But maybe uh, in writing class, your teacher says this sentence is wrong, but in grammar class, your teacher says this sentence is okay. What do you do? The answer is there's no single answer. Follow the person who's in charge. What is the course trying to teach you? And if you're not successfully learning it, you can find your own way of trying to learn that thing. How much time and energy should you spend on a course? If you really want to learn it well, you should spend more time. But if, you're, if you don't care that much, you need to figure out how to at least pass the course. There are so many students who, uh, if they fail the course, then they write a letter to me saying, why did I fail? And then I show them the grade percentages and then they understand. You don't have to wait for that. You can calculate and make sure that you can pass a course before the end of the semester. Um, also note that the world of college is not the same as the outside world. So in college, you are all still students. 
even though maybe you don't know your teacher as well as you knew your high school teacher, maybe it feels a bit different. Maybe you, it feels a bit more high pressure or low pressure, depending on the person. But it's still different from the outside world. In college, if you make a mistake, I'll tell you, don't worry, here's how to fix it. Try not to make the mistake next time. If you don't learn something well the first time, I will say, don't worry, here are some more resources. You can, here are some more practice questions. Try better next time. But if in the real world at work, uh, you make a mistake, your boss could be like a teacher, say, don't worry, or your boss could say, don't come to work tomorrow. So these years in college are some of the last years that people will give you the benefit of the doubt. Uh, and my suggestion is you make good use of this uh, time. Don't worry too much about making mistakes. You do have to worry, but don't worry too much. Uh, and prepare yourself for life after school. In detail, if you need to take a leave of absence, uh, make sure you do it the right way. Going through the school system, or if it's an emergency, you can write a letter to me. Uh, but whatever you do, try to be polite. Again, I say this because in the past, some students were not very polite. Uh, I once got an email with the subject line that was five lines long. And it basically said, oh no, I'm going to fail. I don't want to fail. Please save me. Try not to do that. Uh, and when you do have to ask someone for help or you want to ask a question, uh, try to keep in mind that everybody is busy. You guys will be very busy soon. Your upper class men and women, Shui Zhangjie, are also very busy. Uh, I'm also kind of busy. So try not to, try to remember that, right? If you don't get a response in five minutes, don't panic. Uh, and also remember that there are many ways that people can communicate with each other, right? Line, email, teams. Uh, you, maybe you want to find somebody in person. Uh, so there may be more than one way to communicate. And then the last point, if in the real world you steal money, things will become very bad for you. In college, money is not the only important thing. Knowledge is also very important. If you steal knowledge, things can also get very bad for you. What does stealing knowledge mean? It means that you give an answer that you found somewhere else, and you don't tell me that it's from somewhere else. Plagiarism, Taoshi. If you pretend that your answer is yours instead of that you found it somewhere else, you are stealing knowledge. And if you get a good grade because you are stealing knowledge, you have stolen that grade. If you graduate from this department, based on stolen grades, you have stolen your degree. And if you get a job using that degree, you have stolen the job. So in college, this is also very important. If you find an idea elsewhere, tell the teacher or whoever is in charge that you found it somewhere else. Don't pretend that it's your own idea. This also applies to ChatGPT because as we know, ChatGPT does not actually have a brain. It can't think. ChatGPT takes everything in the internet and gives you what it thinks is the answer that you need. So it is also based on other people's knowledge. 
in this class, you probably won't have the chance to use ChatGPT, but in other classes, uh, the opportunity might present itself. And if you do have the opportunity, make sure that you are doing it in the right way, in a way that the teacher has said you can use ChatGPT. Uh, and if the teacher does not let you do it, then using it would be stealing. Questions? OK, uh, at Mingchuan, technically, if you cheat, the school will kick you out. And Xiao Gui Lai Shuo Bi Jiu Shui Shui. Uh, but of course, as I said, you are all students. Students sometimes make mistakes. So uh, I'll try not to let that happen if somebody catches you cheating. And then finally, uh, if you had a good time in a course and you want to do something nice, at the end of each semester, you will fill out a uh, evaluation sheet based on like how much you learned, how well did the teacher do, and you will also have the chance to write something. Most people don't write anything, but if you really enjoyed your class, I encourage you to write something positive or negative if you think it's important. OK, so those are just some basics. Um, let's do a very, very basic grammar review. And then I will pass out the paper handouts and then we'll call it a day. Where is it? Where is the thing? This one. This is the basic structure of every English sentence. It looks kind of familiar, right? Subject, verb, but there are some things that look new. Every sentence must have a subject. Every sentence must have a main verb. Not every sentence needs an object. It depends on the verb. Some verbs do need an object, some verbs do not. And then you have this. This is everything else. If it's not a subject, not a verb, not an object, then technically it belongs at the end of a sentence. For example, I need both hands, hang on. OK, for example, I bought a pencil from my friend yesterday afternoon. The subject, I, the verb, the main verb, bought. And it needs an object. You need to say what you bought, so a pencil. But everything else belongs at the end, right? Who did you buy it from? My friend. When did you buy it? Yesterday afternoon. You can also add other things at the end. Uh, where, why, how, under what conditions, until when, using what tools. All the other information goes at the back of the sentence. And the things in the front of the sentence only appear once. Every sentence only has one subject, only has one main verb, only has one object. 
Sometimes you need to move information to the front. In that case, you need to tell the reader that the information has moved. For example, if you want to move the time to the front. You will notice that there is now a comma here. This use of the comma tells the reader that things have moved around. This is American English. The British people don't care. But in American English, you need to add this comma to let your reader know that things have moved around. Uh, you can also do the same thing with this information. You can say from my friend yesterday afternoon, comma, I bought a pencil. That would also be a correct sentence. This is the most important information in learning grammar. What is a complete sentence? It must have and can only have one subject. It must have and can only have one verb. And the other information goes to the back unless you add a comma. Questions? OK, let's move into more detailed stuff. Nouns. There are two kinds of nouns, countable and uncountable. Pencil is countable, but not always. Remember I said, what is the definition of a noun? It is not a thing. It is what appears in that position in the sentence. The function defines the meaning. Uh, what is this in Chinese? Uh, part of speech. Uh, nouns. 可数, 不可数, the definition for countable and uncountable nouns is also based on function. So in this sentence, I bought a pencil. You can count it. But what about this sentence? Please answer the exam in pencil. 考试答题请用铅笔. In this case, pencil is uncountable because you are not talking about a physical pencil. You are talking about the idea of a pencil, the abstract idea. In Chinese, it's the same grammar, so you might have to think about this. If you say I bought a pencil, well, my chenbi, you can imagine how many pencils. But if you say use pencil, qing yong chenbi, usually we use one, but it's not really a part of the information. The point is not how many pencils, the point is what kind of writing uh, can you use. So when something is concrete and you can count it and it's physical, uh, you can, it's a countable noun. If something is abstract, the idea of the thing, it is uncountable. This goes for everything. For example, uh, let, let's use another one. Money. Can you count money? Money is uncountable unless The country had to repay its debt in three different monies. Uh, many most uncountable nouns become countable when you're talking about different types or different kinds. So again, function defines grammar. So we've talked about a, uh, right? And if it's a, if it's, um, if the noun begins with a vowel, you use un. What about 
love. This is something that most Taiwanese students have trouble with. Not just Taiwanese students. The BBC called the the most powerful word in the English language. This word does not exist in many other languages. What does it do? You can add the word the to countable and uncountable nouns. It is not about how many. The word the tells you that this it's it's a frame. That's good kuangjia. Think about uh, making movies. When you make a movie, uh, you have a whole scene in front of you, but the camera can only capture one part of the scene. The word the is like the camera. It focuses your attention on one thing. So the most common uses are in a situation if there is only one. In this classroom, there is one teacher. So you would say the teacher. The attention, you are focusing attention on that teacher. In the world, there is one person who is the richest person. There's only one, so you focus attention. But you also have situations where uh, you're telling a story. So for example, I... For example, I saw five cars in front of school this morning. So you have a situation. In this situation, you want to focus on one of the cars. So you would say the one in front. Five in a row, there's one car in front. So you focus attention on that one car. It was a sports car, Paul So the, the function of this word is to focus attention. Sometimes you don't need to give a situation. Using the word the itself creates a situation. OK, so in this sentence, the police is because there is only one group of police. So it's the police. But the man, who is the man? He's the guy running from the police. There's only one guy running from the police. The word the itself creates the situation. When I say the man was running from the police, you know immediately that there is only one man running from the police because I use the word the. So when do you use the word the when you need to focus the reader's attention or when the reader's attention is already focused because there's only one? I know it's not easy to understand. This is why you need to practice and observe. By practicing and observing, you will gain some language sense, yugan, that will help you decide whether you need to use the word the. Questions? OK, so every noun is either countable or uncountable, regardless of the word the. So in English, every noun must have something in front or something behind or it's uncountable. There are only three choices. In other words, every time you use a noun, you have to think. Should I count it? And if I count it, is it one or is it many? Every time. And over time, you will grow, you will create a habit 
of thinking about this. In the same way, when you use a verb in English, you always have to choose uh, among the different options. So when we talk about verbs, there are two main ideas. Tense and aspect. In Chinese, this is 时跟态. These are two different things. There are only three kinds of tense in English. But there are four aspects. Is that right? One, two, three. Yes, there are four aspects. Then is Taiyo Siga. Simple, 简单是, perfect, 完成是, progressive, 进行式, and then you put those two together. Perfect, progressive, 完成进行式. The tense, 时间, tells you when something happens compared to now. If it happens before now, it's, it should be in the past tense. If it happens after now, it should be in the future tense. But sometimes now is not actually now. If you're reading a story or like a news report, the now, the present, may be some time before. Uh, and this is where I usually need to draw a timeline. If you're reading a story, maybe this is sometime in the past. So everything that happens before this point in the past is in past tense. Everything that happens after this point in the past is future tense. The now may not be your time. It depends on what you are reading. But if you talk with somebody, then the now is always now. We're starting to get into a little philosophy here. The aspect, tai, tells you the relationship between sentences. Simple tense just means it's the standard. There's nothing special to think about. Perfect tense, wan chen shi, means that the, in, a, in a sentence using the perfect tense, the fact that this has finished influences the next thing. 句子如果用完成式,代表说这件事情完成了,会影响接下来的发展。For example, uh, If I wanted to say that I ate lunch, and there's no special meaning, I could just say, I ate lunch. If I say I have eaten lunch, this means that it will affect the next thing. So when would I use this? For example, if a friend comes to me and says, hey, do you want to go have lunch? I might say, I'm sorry, I have eaten lunch. Maybe next time. The fact that I have finished affects the situation, the, the developing situation. 事情完成了,影响接下来的发展。因为已经吃完了,所以没办法跟朋友去吃饭。因为已经完成了, because I have finished, so I cannot go with my friend. Progressive, 进行式, same idea, except here instead of finishing, the idea is continuing. I am in the middle of doing something. And because I am in the middle of doing something, it is affecting what happens next. And then finally, perfect progressive, 完成进行式. 
this is uh, saying because I have spent so much time doing this. It affects what happens next, for example. If I only wanted to say that I spent five hours eating, I would just say I ate for five hours. But if I say I have been eating for five hours, I want to tell you that I spent so much time eating. So maybe it affects what happens next. For example, I've been eating for five hours. I really can't eat anymore. Because I spent so much time eating. Or maybe I've been eating for five hours. I really need to take a break. Right? It's emphasizing the complete time that I have spent doing this. So every time you use a verb in English, you have to think about what idea are you trying to communicate. Um, in daily life, people will understand you even if you use the wrong kind. But sometimes in specific situations, it could be confusing. And this is why we have grammar class. Because you will not be a young person, a beginner for the rest of your life. One day you will be something, uh, you will be someone important. You will be someone with power. You will have to manage other people. Things that you say and things that you do will be important. When you get to that point and you have to use English, you want to make sure that your meaning is very clear. And that's why we learn grammar. Yes. Okay. This right? Yeah. Okay. So uh, we will talk about this in more detail during the semester. But since somebody asked, let me explain. These two words are they verbs or are they adjectives? Shironsu. If you think these are verbs, raise your hand. If you think they are adjectives, raise your hand. The answer is that they're both. In that sentence, is surprised a verb or an adjective? It, it depends on whether you add this, right? If it's a complete sentence, then it looks like a verb. If it's if it ends here, then it looks like an adjective. These words we call participles, 分词, because of this reason. It can be both. So the question your classmate asked is, how can you remember which adjective to use? This is a mistake that many Taiwanese students make. How do you remember? And the answer is. Remember the full sentence. So um, we'll talk about this later in the semester or maybe next semester, but this is an active voice. This is in passive voice. Uh, so if you remember the complete sentence, you, uh, for example, this this sentence, I was surprised. 我被惊吓到. Then you can remember that it should be ed. If you remember that this is the active voice, 他吓到我, 
then you'll remember that this should be active ing. Does that help? Oh, OK, so in your sentence, an arm cannot cross itself. You are crossing your arms. So if your subject position is arms and it has to be passive. We'll talk about this later. We'll, we'll talk about this later, but the basic idea is this. OK, do we have other questions? OK, so let me pass out the handouts. The handouts are 100% questions. And we it, starting next week, uh, I will introduce a new grammar idea. And then you will work on the questions with your group members, and then we will compare answers and figure out where uh, something is you don't understand very well and go over that again. So as I said at the beginning, I'm going to teach using the exam, using practice questions. Some of you might think, wait, so you're going to make us practice doing questions in class? Why can't we just do that at home? And my answer is, you could, but will you? That's why we're doing it in class. Next week, we will be talking about verbs in detail. Uh, so the first three sections will be about the present tense, and then the fourth section will be about the future tense. Right, the, the topic is on top of the page. I think. Yeah, anyways, like you um, in class, we will do these practice questions. Uh, and if you need more practice, you can check out the practice book on Moodle. Uh, this one, right? Th these are more questions if you want more practice. Yeah, OK, do you have any questions about anything at all? Yes. It will be your midterm grade. Yes. Yeah. Other questions? Great. See you next week.